Long range Covid's and go. driven squirrel Paul has cover crop pests in his sights. Stalking stick multi-tool, Neil Roundtree gives a top tip from the Highlands. Plus on report pairs, it's the last of the Smoking Targets clay series. Plus news, plus hunting YouTube, welcome to Field Sports Britain. Is there such a thing as too much gun? Possibly, but when it's a pest control job and not a meat hunt, then probably not. Paul's squirrel problem is so great, he's even had his underkeeper and volunteers out in the high seats at dawn to try to stop the greys destroying even more of his emerging maize cover crop. Slight overkill, but you can't get close to them, so you've got to shoot them with a big rifle, unfortunately. This crop's a really good maize crop. Um, drives goes back across the Amptra Road, it's called. What they're doing, they're coming out, and because they're used to feeding on the, on the maize when it was obviously uh, fully mature, um, we were late cutting this year, so, so these squirrels are getting used to coming and feeding here. Um, and if you notice, this is not too bad, this one. I'll show you another one in a minute, but this one, what they're doing, obviously, is digging out, digging them out, and you can tell it's a squirrel because they're, they'll go through the, the kernel, 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 that's the word I'm looking for. They dig it out, eat the, the, the wheat, the germ out of it, and, uh, and then go on. Let's see this one here, look. It's got to the point where you've got other guys actually out on the <laughs> yeah. cover crops dealing with them. Yeah, we've got one area, that they're, they're hammering the, the, the first, sort of like six, six, seven, eight meters. They're actually hammering it that much that I've got a guy coming in early this morning because we were out stalking this morning. There's a guy coming in there specifically just to go on there, wait with his 1.7 and um, to try and get some of the squirrels. Sam the keeper, he's got um, rail traps up through the wood um, with fen traps in. Um, he's got a couple of um, tunnels and got piles of wheat there as well. So we're trying to feed them away there so we can shoot them on the piles of wheat. Um, but they're running straight past that, straight to the, to the, to the maze, which they're used to feeding on. Paul wants to show us more damage. On the way there, he spots a corvid on the cover crop he was shooting over from a hide a few weeks ago. He's very particular about the way he presents the animals. Do you always present your vermin like that? <laughs> yeah, naturally. Do it all the time. Yeah, it's, I don't know, still, even though it's vermin, still got respect for it. You know, it's not, even though they really cost me money and really make me quite angry, um, I don't know, I still just put it in so it looks half tidy, you know. Clean freak. <laughs> this is the field with the most damage. There's a big financial commitment at risk here. Yeah, Telltale signs that squirrels, not you know crows pecking out and eating it, like little piles where they go back and sit and nibble on it and come back out and grab another one. Another one here. Look, we've done the two two one seven shotgun. Got traps out to use. Now all methods. Now he's just tickling quietly with the truck, and you can see him come out the wood at two hundred meters away, and you just smoke them, um, which is which is great, but. You know, it's two quid a bullet, whatever it is, but I think it's probably worth it in the long run. You shoot 10, ten squirrels doing damage on here is, is uh, you know, worth every penny. Oh. See him? You'll get him, don't worry, he's in, he's in serious numbers. On another scoot around, we come back to where we started, and more squirrels are on the move. Flush. <laughs> here we go. Oh, crafty little suckers, aren't they? Might get a couple more come out after I shoot mine. Yeah. 
Yep. Not the <laughs> prettiest. Yeah, so basically what these squirrels are doing here, I've got the game crop on the other side there. They're coming up from this dense woodland here, coming up through, crossing the track and getting out to the uh, cover on the other side. So it's a good little ambush point and a bit of a flush of squirrels. Leaving to go back to the lodge, he spots a very long range corvid. It's not a game crop, but he does what he can to help the farmer. Yep, that's a good shot. Standard. That was 380, I reckon. Yeah, 380. Not bad for a crow. It's been a fruitful, if expensive, hours shooting, but reducing the local grey population is never a waste of time or money. Paul on top of the crops, childerly. And from number ones to, well, number twos, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The Welsh Government wants to close down pheasant shooting. The Welsh Environment Minister has written to Natural Resources Wales stating that the Labour Government in Wales does not support commercial pheasant shooting or the breeding of game birds because of ethical issues. If the Welsh Government pushes through a law on this, it will mean the end of famous shoots such as brigands shown here. The World Fit Ask took place last week in northern France with 1,300 entrants. Winner was Frenchman Christophe Auvray with 191 out of 200. Here is the UK's Ed Solomons who scored 174 with his take on the competition. Everything this year seems to have been fully booked, which is great. I think it's a great, uh, great sign for the sport. Um, all the events, all the major events seem to be very well represented and attended. So yeah, I think that's fantastic. It shows that people are doing, doing the right thing. It's one, of the, it's one of the fantastic things about it is that you get to have some guy who's shot for six months shooting next to a, a current or ex-world champion. I think on the other side of it, there's there's different issues along with that. I'm a, there's been talk recently of maybe doing a seeded sort of setup so all the, the top guys shoot together, which personally I would be in favour of. Um, I think it, it makes sense. It's more spectator friendly, um, if you could say that about shooting. Um, but no, for the for the club level shooter, it's fantastic because they can turn up and be squatted with, you know, George, Richard, uh, Gebbin, the likes of them, and and they can they can see how it's done. And as long as they they don't interfere, which 99% of the time they won't do. They have a great time, so no, good luck to them. Hunting continues to boom in Australia. The last Game Management Authority's licensed statistics in the state of Victoria shows there are now more than 50,000 registered hunters, up from 24,000 20 years ago. The US could be about to lighten restrictions on trophy imports. Donald Trump has called big game trophy hunting a horror show, but his sons are keen big game hunters in Africa, and in 2017 he formed an advisory board to steer US policy on the issue, which he composed mainly of big game hunters. And finally, a falconry display in Kyrgyzstan went wrong last week. A golden eagle suddenly decided that the easiest prey it could see was an eight-year-old girl, so it attacked. Its falconer rescued it, and after getting stitched up in hospital, she was fine. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, we have a top stalking tip from Highland stalker Neil Roundtree of West Highland Hunting. One of the most useful things you can carry on the hill when you're deer stalking is a stick. When you're walking over ground and you're watching deer on a slope, you can use it almost like uh, to feel your way out as to where you're going. That's one of its advantages. When using a spyglass, it acts as a rest. But increasingly these days, people develop products for different things to make rifle shooting easier. One of the biggest mistakes I find people make when they're shooting a deer in, wood, in a woodland is they thump the stick into the ground and put the rifle against it. One, you've anchored yourself to the spot. Two, you've put vibration through the ground that deer are sensitive to. And three, there probably is a simpler and easier way. Let me show you a little trick. You need decent pockets for it. Tuck the stick. Tuck the, tuck the stick into your pocket, take the rifle off your shoulder, lay it on top of the stick like that, get a good firm grip, and then try that. 
And the great advantage is it's stable. You can see that, no bother at all. And the other thing is it's incredibly mobile. So a decent stick and deep pockets, quite useful more ways than one. If you want to hear more from Neil, he's the star of our new podcast. Click on the eye symbol top right to go to the page. Always something from our resident red deer expert. And there will be more from Neil from both Scotland and New Zealand in coming months. Now we have the last in our series of Smoking Targets with Ben Hustwaite. Okay, what we're going to do, have a look at now is actually shooting pairs. We've done a lot of work on specific targets, how to mount properly, you know, looking at different things. Now we're going to actually do what we do in a competition, have a look at shooting two targets. Those targets can be sent, Raphael, meaning the same bird can be sent twice or following, simultaneous pairs or report pairs. This, in this segment here, we're going to look at a report pair. Okay, we've got a nice, fast left to right rabbit, Dave, on report a high left to right midi. So all I'm going to look at first is how you approach, is how you approach the pair, your footwork, your posture, and then also your movement from target to target, okay? Take a look at your pair. Whoa. Bang. Whoa. Nicely shot, beautiful. Not really a lot to pick about there. That's actually no. <laughs> some nice shooting, really. But um, the only thing I would have said to you last year is for the second target, would you take your gun out your shoulder slightly? You can, uh, or you can and you can't. It's, it's totally up to you. But it's got to be a choice. Right. It doesn't want to be sporadic. Yeah. You don't want to be up on one and down another because that's going to change our timing. Right. So I'm not bothered which you do as long as they're pre-planned yes. and we're not yeah. we're not up and down. So. What we're going to look at here is not so much the targets, but actually the mental preparation and how we're going to shoot the pair. Where a lot of people go wrong is they believe that a pair is two movements, where a pair is actually three movements. It's three pre-planned movements. We've got movement one, hold point to kill point. That should be relative to the speed of the bird. We've then got movement two, the most important movement, kill point one, to hold point two. That's the second move what a lot of people miss. That needs to be as fast as you can. We need to get to this hold point before the target and the third movement, hold point two to kill point two. A few little tips that I've learned over the years and how to create this and actually pre-plan that move is if Dave, you get ready. So we're not gonna put any cartridges in, but what Dave would normally do is load the gun, close the gun and stop. What Dave will do here is stare at his second hold point. He will preload that information. And I don't mean a little glance. I mean he's going to pick a spot up in that cloud where he is going to stare. As he comes down, he's then going to place the gun to hold point one, eyes to view point one. He will make move one at a speed relative to the target. Bang! Second move is quick into where Dave stared. Then he's waiting for the target. He's now at the hold point before the clay and movement three, again, relative to the target speed, depending on the method which he's chosen. Pull. No bird. Okay, so we've had a no bird. Dave's opened the gun. He's now left with this situation, which is a different situation to what he's used to. He's normally gonna load two targets. So what I will have Dave do is remove this cartridge and start his normal process and routine again. Otherwise we're doing something different to the norm. So we're gonna take two cartridges and even though the first bird, regardless of what happens, is scored as a kill, we're still gonna give this next pair 
exactly the same amount of attention to both targets. We're not going to come outside of that pre-shot routine. Okay. One more pair. Beautiful. And uh, on the risk of embarrassing myself, I'm not going to shoot any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Now from Sporting Targets in Bedfordshire, where we filmed that with Ben, to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Owen Beardsmore is out with a client, Pascal, after June Roebuck. Not the easiest of quarry due to the month. The good news is that they connect. SRS Power is using Hatcam to give us a first person's perspective. It's also a good shot. Felu Chasse is out on the opening of the hunt in the French vineyards. It's in French with English subtitles and has lots of useful instructional tips. This is part one of two films. Exercise your Heidi complex with Paul and Gerald Reilman. The Hunter Brothers give us marmot shooting in Austria to the sound of cowbells. On the other side of the world in New Zealand, Clark Boys Hunting NZ is out for what they call a quick afternoon hunt on the feral pigs, and they are successful. Project Upland produces this inspirational, if a bit overdone, film about chucker shooting in the USA. It's out on the Northwoods Collective channel. Cheyenne River Predator Hunters present Coyote Culture, stylishly shot, and a great 15 minutes of fun and predator control from the USA. And finally, staying in the USA, gigging frogs with the guys at night on the marsh is a summer sport, and says Bobby Guy Films, a great way to get out and catch some delicious meat to throw on the grill. Yep, that's what he says. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click the like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about Field Sports Britain. We are at 7pm UK time every Wednesday with Field Sports Britain. And you can invest in our company, Field Sports Channel PLC. Go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares to find out how. I am standing in Mallorca. I won't bore you with the reasons why. From here, let me say good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>